to look, I started looking for what could drive uh, the inflammation and injury to the kidney. And I realized it was a very big link linkage with uric acid mm. and people with high uric acid were at really at increased risk for developing high blood pressure. And then we started doing experiments by raising uric acid in animals. And suddenly we found that those animals developed mild inflammation in their kidneys and high blood pressure just by raising uric acid. And then the question, of course, was, well, what drives up the uric acid? Right. And one of the one of the things that can do it is sugar. And sugar intake had been increasing during the last century in parallel with an increase in uric acid and in parallel with a rise in blood pressure. And I thought, well, maybe that's it. And so we started giving sugar to animals and they developed high blood pressure. And if we lowered uric acid, we could lower their blood pressure. But the incredible thing was when we gave sugar to animals, they also became fat and they became insulin resistant and they became all these features that we call metabolic syndrome. And when we right. lowered the uric acid, we improved all of those. And they go, oh my gosh, could uric acid be important in the way sugar causes obesity. And sucrose is a disaccharide that consists of a glucose molecule and a fructose molecule bound together. And then when you ingest sugar or sucrose, they get the two get broken apart and then you absorb them separately in the gut. So you get glucose and fructose together when you eat table sugar. And high fructose corn syrup is also consists of glucose and fructose that are mixed together in a, a combination that can vary in terms of concentration. Typically, it's like 55% fructose and 45% glucose. And these are the two major added sugars that are added to the diet, and they can make up 15 percent of the overall caloric intake in the average person's diet. So, you know, sugar is a very big component. Of the two sugars, glucose and fructose look very similar in terms of structure and, and uh, chemistry, but they are very different in, in the way they are metabolized. And so glucose is like the major fuel in our blood that we use to drive all the biologic processes we do in terms of, you know, the major carbohydrate fuel. And fructose is, is not present very much in, in the body. It's, there's only small concentrations in the body, maybe one one hundredth or so of what glucose is. But the fructose, um, when you eat fructose, it's metabolized mainly in the liver and the intestine, but uh, but it can also be uh, metabolized in other sites, like, uh, like for example, in the fat, in the kidney, in the brain, uh, and even in the islets and the pancreas where insulin is made. So initially, when we were doing our research, we found that fructose was really the, the key uh, sugar that was driving the obesity and metabolic syndrome. If we fed animals fructose, they got very, very fat, insulin resistance, fatty liver, high blood pressure. And the fructose was, was what was making the uric acid. So a glucose doesn't make uric acid. But we also found that we, when we gave glucose to animals, they also became fat. But when we would lower uric acid in animals feeding sugar, we could have an effect. So it suggested to us that there was something going on with the glucose. Okay as well. So uh, we realized that there is a, a pathway by which glucose can be converted to fructose in the body. Annotated and summarized. Easy to share with loved ones. The description below the title for this video has these summary points. 